How do the tides work? Here's Adam Hart Davis with a biscuit, a pickled onion and an orange. Tides are a complicated business. Let me show you what I mean. Imagine that this chocolate biscuit is the earth and this pink blob is me on Mersey's side, sitting on the edge of it and spinning round and round getting night and day. Now, let me bring in the sea. In a simple world, the sea would just be a sphere, even depth all the way round. But of course, the world isn't simple. And the main influence on this sea is the pickled onion or the moon. And when it's here, what it does is to pull up the water towards itself and it pulls up the earth a bit. So you get a hump of high water on either side of the earth. So as the earth turns, I get high tide, low tide, high tide, low tide. Now, the sun also has an influence. Here is the sun, the orange, and when it's over here, what it does is to diminish the effect of the moon. It only pulls about half as hard because it's 400 times further away. So it lowers the effect of the tide. On the other hand, when it's in line with the moon over here, then the pull is in the same direction as the moon and you get super high tides and super low tides and they are called spring tides. And you get those whether the sun is on the same side as the moon or on the opposite side. Now, if that was all there was to it, predicting the tides wouldn't be too difficult. But in fact, there are further cycles you have to think about. For one thing, the sun is higher in the sky in summer than it is in the winter. For another thing, the moon's orbit is not a circle but an ellipse, just like this plate, in fact. So sometimes it's further away from the Earth than at others. And there's even one cycle of the Sun and the Moon that happens only once every 18.61 years. How was it for you? Please comment on and rate this movie. Think you can do better? Then try to explain it yourself.